So. All right, now, Kevin Germain again, but forget what I was last talking about because I'm totally switching <laughs> subjects. And this was a great segue in what David was talking about. What, what I'm talking about is workforce housing in, in the Big Sky community. And wearing my Big Sky Chamber of Commerce hat, we had a subcommittee that started in 2013 that really study our workforce housing in the Big Sky. And a report that was produced in 2014, and this is also on the Chamber's website by a consulting group that we hired out in Colorado, documented that we have 2,300 year-round workers here in Big Sky. 83% or 1,900 of those workers in commute every day. So the vast majority of our workers are coming from outside of this community. And obviously the big limitation in, from getting those workers to live here is cost, and the cost to live here in Big Sky specifically, and housing. Um, why am I talking about it with water and sewer? Well, it's to, in my mind, it's it's directly related, directly related or linked to our water and sewer limitations in Big Sky. David just mentioned the canyon. When you look at Big Sky and you look at as a year-round resident, where do you want to live? It's really not up at the mountain when there's still snow up there and. April 30th, no offense Dr. Fountain, but if you live here year-round, the most logical place to be is down here in the meadow or in the canyon section. It's also where you're close to the school, you're close to just the services that you need. The canyon is on well and septic. We have certain limitations on the densities that we can do in the canyon because of the water and sewer needs in the can, or the existing water and sewer limitations in the canyon. The other area that it makes a lot of sense to increase our densities and have more housing is down here in the meadow. And when you look at town center specifically, they have a cap number of SFEs, they have a cap number of entitlements. That's all based on sewer and water capacities. And so my personal feeling is if we're really gonna solve our affordable or workforce housing needs, we really need to solve our water and sewer needs for the community. So that was all I was going to talk about for workforce housing, and I can bore you for another four days if you want to know more about the <laughs> issues that we have with workforce housing. But it's a big issue, and it is really, really related to water and sewer. Thank you. Anything to add, Mike? Ron? No. I always got something to add. I know you do. <laughs> the, the one thing I'll say on the workforce housing side, I think, is getting a little bit lost in translation, and maybe you can hit on this, but. No one really talks about how our workforce housing isn't necessarily exactly linear to growth. Sure. Uh, so as you see a 20 year build out plan and you see someone uh, necessarily doubling in size, it doesn't mean that the barista or whatever can't serve three coffees instead of one coffee. The barista's gotta be there, is that the right word? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's gotta be there uh, for the one, but you know, it, it, there is employment growth going to happen in uh, in Big Sky, but it's not linear to the growth. It's not linear, but when, and this but we do have a deficit of, right now. So. Yeah, the deficit that yeah. we have right now, and so when I said 1,900 workers in commute every day, if your goal, and this is looking at other mature results, if your goal is to have 60% of your workforce live here in your community, we have about a 600 unit shortage in 2014. So it's greater today. Um, and, and this isn't just about having your workers live here. This is about a community. Your 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 year round residents are the ones that coach baseball, teach at the school, you know. And so it, it's not just the the dollars that leave here at the end of the day. It's also the brain trust that leaves here at the end of the day and, and expends the, their energy in other other areas. I will say there's a, a major economic impact if we could get our workers to live here. If you if you do live in Big Sky, you know April 21st when the ski lifts cl close, it's a scary place. All the restaurants shut down. Try to go out to lunch. You know, and, and so if we had more workers living here, those restaurants would stay open. So a good economic impact for those workers. So all these things kind of feed back on one. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, and I'm sure we'll get more of this in Q&A. Yeah. Right. So with that, we're going to switch gears. You've kind of got things characterized, got some stuff in your head, have some information about workforce. Now we're going to talk more about sort of permitting, regulation, thinking about some of those things. Tom? 